please to go ahead and give us your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Robert, and uh, good morning to everyone. And uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity to uh, address you and explain how packaging uh, can be packaging of boards and panels can uh, help reducing uh, CO2 emission and help reducing uh, operational costs. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, is Henrik, as uh, Robert mentioned. Um, uh, Tentoma is. Um, is, was started in 2011 as a, as a startup company and as a service company. In 2014, we introduced our ma machinery uh, to the market. We call them RORO for roll on, roll off. So that's the brand name of our machinery. And uh, in, uh, in 2017, we got uh, professional investors on board in the company. And we changed the name to Tentoma, which is ancient Greek for stretching. That is basically what we do. We, we stretch plastic to, to cover boards. And uh, all the way uh, since uh, 2015, we have introduced a number of standard packaging machines in the market, making it possible for us to package uh, a lot of um, um, building products uh, in different ways. We are located in Denmark and are covering uh, Europe and uh, United States uh, primarily from uh, from Europe. Uh, we have uh, in-house uh, development facilities. We manufacture or assemble all the, the machines uh, in-house, securing that they are they are quality-wise okay, and do the FAT together with our company customers before. We send our um, um, engineers out with the machine and install it uh, everywhere. Basically, we uh, we we purchase uh, components from uh, well-known uh, manufacturers. So that was very shortly about uh, the company. We have uh, among our customers some of the the big building mat materials manufacturers. We are very much focused on building materials and uh, also on uh, non-roving uh, roll materials and textile on, on roll as we can package long products as one of the, the key elements in, in our packaging technologies. What I would, would talk about is, uh, is uh, packaging and of course packaging is uh, crucial for, for your products uh, of course primarily to, uh, to protect it uh, against dirt, water uh, but also to make sure that your, your products look nicely towards the customers. For instance, uh, branding is possible to have a nice branding on the, on the side or on the top uh, of the products. And also the, the way we package it allows us to, to keep the products together or keep, uh, for instance, uh, corner protection, et cetera, et cetera, attached to the product. So basically quality is, as you all know, very important for your, your packaging but also responsible packaging is uh, crucial for your business. We, the, the, uh, Bruno talked about uh, CO2 emission. So of course, packaging can also be part of uh, uh, living up to your sustainable development goals. All the regulations coming to us uh, for uh, using more recycled material, uh, using our way of packaging can, can be, be part of that journey. We can help you reduce uh, energy consumption. We can help you reduce plastic consumption. Plastic is basically a fantastic material, but don't let it end up in the nature and use as little as possible is basically our um, message and is basically where we can, can help you. And of course, the customers have some uh, requirements and the image towards the, the customers is important. Thus, our, our message is make sure you protect your product with a, with a six-sided uh, packaging. Make sure that you use as little plastic as possible. Make sure that you use as little energy as possible. And of course, automize your, your, your packaging process in order to reduce cost, but also to reduce the, the CO2 uh, footprint and uh, plastic consumption, energy consumption, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I would like to, to explain the, uh, just an overview of three basic uh, packaging technologies which can basically do the same for 
for you in protecting the, the, the panels and the boards. The, the, a classic way of doing it is stretch wrapping, either horizontal, horizontal or vertical, but, but, but using your basic your, your stretch film to, to, to wrap the product. And in some cases, it's also needed to make a top layer, for instance, to protect the ends, uh, make sure that it is more uh, protected against water because you have layer on layer, so you have the potential inlet of water. So you basically have a, a two-way process where you first put a, a, a top layer to, to seal the ends and the top, and then you, you you might be stretch wrapping. It can also be in, in the other way around that you that you stretch wrap. Stretch wrapping have some advantages. It's it's relatively cheap investment, but you consume uh, a lot of plastic. It can be uh, very uh, often. You should attend to the system because from time to time the the, the rolls are breaking. And you need to have people ready to to put in rolls. The rows are relatively small, so you have to exchange them relatively frequently. And of course, branding is, is not um, nice because you put layer on layer and you have to take care of, of the ends of the products. And you have the risk of tailing of the, the products when it is transported, for instance, on the truck, if it is not uh, finished properly. So there are some advantages, of course, with that technology. There are some disadvantages the same goes with, with heat shrinking, where you basically put too much plastic over your product in, in a packaging process, put it through a, a heat shrink tunnel where you have uh, where you heat it uh, 360 days a, a year and 24 hours, where you have 150, 160 degrees in, in your production, and when you then shrink the, the plastic uh, down to the product. So in this kind of uh, packaging you basically put too much plastic on and you shrink it down and it's it's not possible to make a hundred percent sealed closed enclosure if you close it all the way around you need to micro perforate it before you put it into the heat shrink oven and thus it's of course not uh, sealed anymore so it also has some advantages in for instance the the investment is is relatively uh, low again. Nevertheless, you need to have a, a shrink oven. You need to have a packaging process. You need a frequent uh, change of the film rolls, as you have uh, two film rolls to make the the curtain. But it, it's um, a very common use way of packaging as well. Another alternative, if if the is the horizontal tubular packaging, as we use in the row stretch packing, which can safeguard you 100% sealed product, six-sided sealing, uh, it's a tubular film covering all the product and which is um, sealed at the ends. So you have the, the stretching power of the film to keep the, the products together. We can reduce the energy consumption because there is no, no shrinking process. And basically we put too little film on the product and then we stretch it, and I will show you that uh, shortly. And it is 100% sealed. The CapEx investment is uh, slightly higher, but you reduce the operational cost, you, you reduce the energy consumption, you reduce the, um, the film consumption. Uh, so, so the principle of this way of packaging is basically that we have a, a tubular film laid flat on a, on a, on a roll, where we can have between uh, three and 10 kilometers of film, depending on the thickness of the film. Thus, very seldom uh, film roll changes. We, we then open the film, we get information about the length of the product. We, we open the film on uh, four arms, where we roll up the film. We then, uh, the, and the opening here of the, of the film is basically smaller than the circumference of the product. So we open it, we stretch it, and then we move in the products into the, the tube. So this shows you the principle uh, <coughs> on how we do it. So we, we have the film. I will show it uh, now. This is the final packaging. And I will show you how this is done. We have the film next to the conveyor. We roll up the film. We do the front sealing. We move it into the product lane. 
we stretch it and we move in the product, we do the back sealing. So now the product is 100% sealed. So here the, the circumference of this might be smaller than the circumference of the product. And that's why we, uh, we stretch it and move in the, the product into the, the plastic bag, so to say. So the reason for us to saving film is that we basically put too little film on your product and then stretch it to fit the product. So the film is a stretchable film. It's not a shrinkable film, but it's a stretchable film. We only put one layer of film on the product and the film can very often be thinner than what is used today because the, 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 the film is a stronger stretchable film. Even if you have sharp edges and sharp corners, we try to figure out how much stretch you can put on the film. The film can actually be stretched up to approximately 100% and then go back on the, on the product. So you have a tight product, a tight packaging, but at the same time, the same film size can cover several uh, um, product sizes. This is uh, one example where we see a saving in film of uh, 29%. The, the current packaging is that they have a top layer, they do uh, stretch wrapping. It's a five-sided ceiling. There are no packaging in the bottom of the product. Uh, so they use uh, today 724 gram. When we have done the packaging, we use 515 gram per pack. And now it is actually possible to make a nice branding. You print the film, or the film manufacturer print the film, and you can have a branding on the side of the product and you have reduced with 29%. And, and if, he, if you are using a shrink uh, packaging today, you will see even higher uh, film consumption uh, savings. We say between 20 and 60% uh, and film savings can be achieved depending on the, the packaging methodology uh, used today. So the, the kind of product we can pack is uh, lengthwise products up to 15 meter. We can actually go a little higher. It's products up to 2.2 meter in width, and it is products up to 1.4 meter in height. And then it can be everything uh, lower than that. Um, so, so what we do during the, the, the initial process is finding out what is the variance in your product how many film do we need to cover the portfolio of the film and how can we get the best packaging? How can we get the best look and feel of, uh, of your products? Please also notice that the packaging can be with or without feeds or with or without pallets. And even also note that if you, for instance, have a wooden uh, feet or wooden uh, or uh, EPS feeds, the film, because it is have some stretching power, can actually hold the feeds together to the product, so you can avoid uh, strapping. If your products are not sliding too much, uh, for instance, we we are just going to deliver one to a gypsum manufacturer. There we hold the the gypsum feeds to the products without any strapping, and there is a portfolio of products which will be covered with with uh, two or three film sizes. Uh, so it can be different lengths with the same kind and look and feel, and it can be di different circumferences. This is an example where you have uh, the circumference of the product is exactly the same as the, as the film. And here the products are higher, and here it's even higher than the film. So, so the same principle goes here. So I'll just show you the, the, the principle of our short video here. Here we, we have got information about the length of the product. We roll the film onto our grippers and we, we now have sufficient film on our grippers. We do the front ceiling. Now we have a bag which is too small. And as you can see, we stretch it as we move over to the product lane here. And then we have this bag which we have stretched. And you can see the film is crawling back to, uh, to the product. And if you notice over here, we have two film sizes ready because this customer's portfolio of products needs two film sizes to cover the whole variance. 
So, so this is just another example showing packaging of, of smaller products where we have more film on our grippers for packaging of several products in, uh, in one operation. So it can be different kind of uh, product sizes, it can be different kind of uh, material which can be packed with this uh, kind of technology. And here it's the same circumference but just a longer product so you get the same nice packaging. Here showing uh, a little uh, higher product being packed So if you have products and you want, uh, might be interested in this kind of packaging, we can do an assessment and we can also do a, a test packaging, finding out which of our machinery is capable of packaging your kind of products, what can be the savings you can achieve compared to your current uh, used packaging and what capacity are needed uh, for, for your kind of products. So we have different uh, machines. These machines, for instance, are, are fit for purpose for packaging of uh, boards and panels, uh, cement boards or um, uh, gypsum boards. And it can be as an inline packaging or it can be as an uh, offline packaging. This is an offline example of uh, gypsum where the, the manufacturer, the, the, the customer, uh, gets his products with a forklift, place it here, and we then um, um, raise the first product in the stack, a stack of two or three products. We raise the first product, we uh, move the first pallet into the packaging, and then here on the outfeed, we raise that, then the next one, and then eventually you have three stacks on top of each other where the forklift can now have three final stacks packed with or without uh, feed uh, insert. It could be with a feed insert here just before entering, or it could be with feed insert and strapping just after packaging. Just to give you a, an idea. Uh, so this is the basic principle. Two pallets are loaded. One is lifted off. The next, the, the lower one is packed and is, uh, is lifted. And then you have a stack of uh, boards ready to be stored. So packaging quality, it's all about packaging appearance, branding, it would be nice, it would be uniform using this, uh, this way of packaging. These are just uh, examples uh, showing uh, how, how it can look. This is an example packed without uh, feeds. It could as well be with feeds uh, embedded into the, the packaging. You can see energy savings, down to 10%, you can see film consumption savings, as I mentioned, between 20 and 60%. You can see cost for maintenance service. You don't need to maintenance. You don't need to, to change film roll that often. And uh, we have very, very little wearing and tearing parts in the machinery. It's really machinery made for, for durability. Uh, just an example, uh, a manufacturer of, uh, of uh, glass wool saved 30 tons of uh, plastic every year and reduced with uh, 165 megawatt hour per year. Another example, mostly looking at the, at the branding where, where the customer um, um, package um, fiber boards achieve some uh, magnific magnificent advantages. So, so we, we can be part of your sustainability, achieving your uh, sustainability goals, focusing on seven, energy efficiency, eight, nine, and, uh, and 12, supporting you with energy efficiency because you don't need a, a heat shrink tunnel. We only use very, very little energy in, in standby mode. When you are welding, we of course use energy to, to melt the film, to do the front and back sealing but that's the only time where we basically use, uh, use energy. We only have one packaging process. Uh, improving production, improving grow, uh, very low uh, labor uh, forces used. It can support you in reaching uh, your, your goals about reducing carbon footprint. 
energy, plastic uh, saving, uh, magnificent uh, values which can be, be reduced. And of course, uh, basically doing more with less. That is uh, what it is all about. And please have in mind that uh, the film we are using is a commonly used stretcher film which have been used for the last 40 to 50 years within vertical stretch shoot. This film can have up to 50% of recycled material, and it is, of course, 100% recyclable. It's recyclable. So after use, it can be recycled to, uh, to companies which regranulate it, and it can be used again. So up to 50% recycled material can be in the film and still maintaining the, the properties of the film. And we have a number of uh, commonly known uh, film manufacturers who can manufacture the, the film we are using, which is a standard film. You, you, the, you as a customer will be the one who are purchasing the film. So thank you for your, your attention. And um, I'm ready for any questions uh, you may have. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Henrik, for a very nice, um, very slick presentation. And I think you you answered pretty much all of the questions that we might have. In fact, uh, Jean-Philippe Pervache did ask um, specifically how much energy consumption is reduced in comparison with heat shrink. And then on the following slide, you immediately answered his question, which was a reduction of 90%. So uh, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, the, uh, the 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 energy is really. If you take away the uh, the heat shrink oven from the equation, we basically use the same kind of energy as the other packaging uh, equipment, but we take away the very big uh, energy consumption, namely the shrink uh, part of it, and that's a major energy consumption thing. Absolutely. So how does how does the uh, the cost of the two different um, wrapping materials cost the the heat shrink and and the the stretch are they are they comparable in expense so the the, the most simple film uh, uh, a transparent film in a in a in a stretch wrap is is the cheapest material a good uh, shrink film which is reducing when you uh, heat it is slightly cheaper than a good stretch film so the stretch film is cheaper. So that's why I, I normally say that you can reduce 20 to 60 percent in consumption, but 10 to 50 percent in cost, because the cost reduction is slightly less than the than the um, volume consumption. Does, did that make sense, Robert? Yeah, I think uh, we yeah we definitely we what we need is a graph. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the 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 the, the cost uh, the, the the reduction in, in in material in kilogram is heavier than the reduction in cost because of the 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 the, the stretch film is slightly more expensive than the shrink film. Got it. But you're using less less material. Yes. Okay. So um, along. Side that we do have a very very specific uh, question from Ali Alem Daroilu uh, from Turkey, in fact, from a, uh, a cement board uh, manufacturer in Turkey. And uh, Ali says, "What would be the minimum the re the minimum required number of packages per day to reasonably justify investing in such a machine?" He says, "We have previously searched for a packaging machine, but the cost was not justified for only 60 to 70 packages per day." No, that's correct. You you need, uh, I would say, 30, 40 uh, packs per hour to to really justify this uh, packaging because the, the investment is, uh, if you need conveyors, if you're putting up a, a total line, it, it's of course an, a certain investment. If you're just exchanging your, your packaging, then it's a, it's a more affordable uh, process. But we are talking about uh, between our, our cheapest machine, if you can say like that, costs 150,000 euro, and then it goes up depending on the the sizes, the the the, the capacity, etc., etc., to up to 250, 300,000 euro. Uh, so it really you need to have a certain volume. 
to to justify the investment. So I would say we have customers purchasing it for for 25, 30 because of the packaging quality. But if it should justify by the return on investment, you should have some packaging uh, like say 40 packs per hour. Right. Okay. But but as you say, the 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 product that you get out of the end of the machine is really you know world world class yes yes it is and if your company has an aspiration to be a world class company then maybe you should be investing in things that make you look like a world class company that's not up for me to <laughs> to take that decision robert but i tend to of course agree agree with you <laughs> yeah, well I, yeah i thought you might um so here's another very very quick question you did mention um single flow and semi flow on one of your uh, your uh, graphics and i just wondered what yeah. was the difference between those two it's uh, if if you don't have the need for for high volume we, our machines can can as a as a, a single flow machine can package 50 60 70 packs per hour but if you really need to go up in speed we can take more film on our grippers for several products. That's what we saw in the film where we saw the small packs being packed. There we, we take up film, for instance, for, for three, four, five products at a time and do, do back sealing as well and front sealing and cutting and continue the process before we capture new film. And so that's for us an option to increase uh, packaging uh, capacity that's what we call semi flow because it's not a continuous flow but it's almost a continuous flow because from time to time we need to capture new film right okay so you ca capture film for several packages and then you you release some of the film as yeah. you're going along. Ah, yeah very good and so when you when you are when you seal off the end of that package are you essentially also uh, creating the front of the next package. Yes, exactly. Uh, al allow me very quickly, uh, thank you for the question, allow me very quickly to show you that. Here, here we do the, 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 the packaging uh, or the rolling up, we do the front sealing. Uh, and then if I continue here, so do -do 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 -do. Now we do the back sealing. We are basically done. You see, there are no more film. We go over and get for a new product. That yep. is single flow. Here you can see one product being packed. We still have, we are still standing. Here you can see we still have film on our grippers. So now we do a back sealing and at the same time make this sealing for the next product. Nice. We, we, so, so that is what we call semi-flow, right? Yeah, very good. Yeah, I know, very, very good indeed. Um, Henrik, uh, that's it for questions, uh, but I want to thank you once again for a very, very um, slick, eloquent um, presentation, great use of video, and uh, thanks very much indeed for being so clear on uh, what your company can do for the uh, cement board um, uh, industry. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Robert, and uh, thank you for a nice event and for everybody else, thank you for listening and please feel free to contact either me or some of our sales guys, which contact details can be found on our website. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Henrik. We'll see you again another time. Hopefully we'll see you in the real world very soon. Hope so too. Okay, thank you. Bye for now. Okay. Um...